My Lord and Savior, come on, put your hands together and give them a praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. You can be seated in his presence. I was glad 
what they said unto me it is let us go into the house of the Lord it's it is just such a blessing to be in God's house amongst his people and to just feel and to experience the very presence of the living God um, we're going to kind of go straight into our message today but I, I do want to just tell you we're, we're starting a new series today which is called The Art of Overcoming all of us as believers find ourselves in situations where we're facing trials or issues or troubles or situations or tribulations but I just want to give you some good news today about overcoming God has made us to be overcomers in every situation that we may experience and I, I want to tell you that he has not left us uh, comfortless and he has left us with everything that we need to be victorious in, in every area of our lives you can expect to be victorious. You can expect to overcome. I don't care what it is you're up against. I don't care if it's sickness. I don't care if it's disease. I don't care if it's lack. I don't care if it's poverty. I don't care what it is. Jesus died on Calvary that we might have abundant life. And that is a promise to the believers. And you have to have an expectation that no matter what you're coming up against, you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus and that you are going to overcome. You've got to expect it. You've got to have the mindset that I know that this situation may look like it's a big, huge situation and I, I may have trouble overcoming it. But by God's grace, I'm telling you right now that you're going to come overcome it. I'm telling you right now by God's grace, you are going to come through it. I'm telling you right now by God's promises that you are victorious because you are in Christ Jesus, your Lord. So I don't care what the situation is. It's not too big. Is there anything too big for God? No, there's not. There's nothing too big for God. All it is is a bigger testimony to his power and to his grace and to his mercy. I don't care what you're up against. I don't care what it looks like. And I know that this, this series... Is, is going to prove to be a series that is going to teach us just different principles about the art of overcoming, how we overcome. It's already been promised to us that we're going to overcome. But how do we do it? How do we, how do we break free from something that has held our mind in bondage for years and years and years? How do we break free from, from situations from our past that have literally held us in emotional captivity for years and years and years. And that's what this, this series is going to do. It's going to just tell us the biblical truths that God has put into place that is going to help us as we go forth expecting our miracle and our deliverance and our situation to change because we are overcomers. Let's go to 1 John 5 and 1. 1 John 5 and 1. 1 John 5 and 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it reads, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And I tell you, if you believe that, there are benefits and privileges that go along with that. If you can believe that Jesus Christ is born of God and that he is the Messiah, there are promises, there are benefits, there are things that you automatically are entitled to because you are a believer. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, uh, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. We love God and we keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. You are born of God in that you have confessed Christ as your Savior. You, as a believer, you have overcome 
the world. See, this is this is Paul talking, and he's he's not saying that you can overcome the world. He's saying that you have overcome. Definite armor. You have overcome. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? And our text for this week is going to come from uh, verse number four. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So the first first part of this uh, series is going to be even our faith. Even our faith. Overcome. The word overcome, according to Wikipedia, means to succeed in dealing with a problem or a difficulty. It means that you are have had success in, in dealing with something that was a hindrance. It was a problem. It was a difficulty. It was a situation. It was something that you were up against. It could have been a trial. It could have been a test. But to be an overcomer, it means that you have just simply, you have had success in dealing with those situations and those issues. As our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry, we as covenant kingdom believers continually find ourselves facing worldly trials, tests, tribulations, and situations. But note this as with Jesus, God has equipped us to overcome anything that we are facing by the Holy Ghost our comforter and our keeper. You have already been equipped. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. In other words, I'm going to leave you with, with everything that you need to be successful as a believer and as an overcomer. Um, St. John 16 and 33, Jesus says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace in this world. Peace, now I want to say this, peace is the end result of government and it is the end result of obedience. Peace is the end result of government and of obedience. In Isaiah 9 and 7 it says, Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. There is no end to the increase of the peace and government of God. But you cannot have peace in your life unless you are submitted to his government and you are submitted uh, also uh, to his obedience. You are, you are obedient to him. You have to understand that God is at the head of everything that we do. His word is, is, is in, in a sense, it is our, our, our blueprint for us to be victorious and have a successful life. So I want you to say this. Say no government, no, government. no, obedience, no obedience, no peace. No, peace. no government, no, no obedience, no peace. You ever wonder why, you know, you're doing it when sometimes when you're doing everything that you, you know to do, it, it seems, and you, there's just no peace in the situation. Most of the time, the reason we experience that because there's something about that situation that we have not submitted or turned over to God. A lot of times, we want to be delivered, we want to overcome it, but we want to under, overcome it under our own terms. You know, we want to be part of the solution. But but we have to understand, God is going to fix it in his way of, you know, in his time according to his way. He's going to fix it the way that he wants to fix it, when he wants to fix it. Say, no government, no, government, no, obedience, no obedience, no peace. No peace. And so what happens then is we find ourselves with our minds being tormented. We're, we're, we don't have peace, can't sleep at night. You know, different things happen. People have their hair falling out. You know, blood pressure go up. This, that, and the other. Other. It's because you have not submitted the situation to God. You're trying to dibble and dabble and keep your hands in it. His word says one thing about the situation, but we're trying to win or be victorious or be overcomers by using means other than what he has told us to do. So as a result, we don't have any peace about this situation. Somebody say, uh-oh, no peace. That's what it is. You know, a lot of times we, we say that the enemy is tormenting us or he's, he's, he's prohibiting our peace and this, that, and the other. But we have to consider what is actually causing that. We have to understand that we have to fall under the government of Jesus Christ. 
we have to understand that after we've come under his government, submitted ourselves to be obedient to him, we have to obey him. We have to obey his word. Just as Jesus, through many trials and tests, overcame the world, Jesus has made his people victorious over the systems and vices of this world and of its rulers. There's something else I want to read that was in St. John 16 and 33. It says, Ye shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. If Jesus is saying that he has overcome the world, you have that same overcoming power and authority in your life. St. John 17 and 16 says, Jesus said that we are not of this world, even as he was not of this world. Just like he said, I have overcome the world. Have peace. Rest in peace. Understand. Have, 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 don't be tormented. Be confident. Because I have overcome the world. But in the same sense, you are overcomers of the world too. You are overcomers of every test, every trial that the enemy would try to bring your way. He has created you like that. You are made like that. In, in uh, Genesis 1 and 27, it says that you are made in the image of God. You are made in his image. You are a spirit being made in the very image of God. And just like Jesus used spiritual principles to overcome the works of the devil, you have to use spiritual principles also to overcome. A lot of times we don't have peace in the situation because we are using the wrong methodology to try to overcome. Flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom. So we have to understand that though we rest, we, 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 we are in a battle, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Our enemy, our foe, foes, our, our, our battles, our struggles, they are spiritual in nature. You're not going to overcome a spiritual test or trial or, or, or battle in the natural. You have to understand that you're going to have to use spiritual means to overcome and to be victorious in what you're dealing with. So that scripture says that we are not of this world, even as he was not of this world. So we're living on something that I remember Donald Lawrence, uh, the musical writer, said at the beginning of one of his songs. He said that we're spirit beings having a natural uh, encounter or, or experience. That's what he said. That's a really good way to put it. You are a spirit being. You're spiritual. You are a spirit being. being. You're not going to overcome the things that you're coming up against in the natural. How many times have you experienced that? How many times have you experienced yourself trying to make the problem better using natural means and the problem gets worse? You know, when, when, when I'm, we're counseling people, we tell people the first thing you have to do, if there's a situation, if there's an issue, the first thing you have to do is you have to be committed to turn it over to God. What that means is you got to die to the situation. So the next time that person says something to you, you can't snap and go off because you're liable to set your overcoming in that situation back by months or weeks. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? See, see, sometimes we can be our own worst enemy when it comes to overcoming. We have to understand that every, see, that's why the Bible tells us stuff like turn the other cheek. It talks about forgiving. Even if somebody does something against us, it doesn't say that the other person, that we should expect the other person to forgive us and wait for them to forgive us and then we forgive them. No, it says that we should forgive them. The Bible even takes it further. It says that if you're praying and you're at the altar and you have an all against somebody else and you have not forgiven them, leave your prayer there, go forgive that person and then come back to the altar and continue with your prayer. Because we're dealing with spiritual principles and you have to use spiritual methods to overcome. And this is totally the opposite of what I learned when I was living in the world. When I was living in the world, if I heard somebody said something or somebody did something, I'd say, where are they? I'm going to fix this. I'm getting ready to deal with this. And you know, the more I think back on it, I was just making the problem worse. Because I would end up with a black eye. They would end up with a black eye. 
my clothes would be torn off, I would have a cut on my body. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You know, it's, it's not going to have a good ending. But when you turn it over to God, you can expect and you leave it there. That's, that's a key. You got to leave it there. You can't put it in his hands. And then when you see the person, you say, oh, I got something I need to say to this person. No, once you've given it to him, the overcoming process is now ready to begin. It is now ready to begin. You see, because once you've done what the word of God says for you to do in the situation, then you fulfill your requirements. Yeah. How many times have you seen people that have been holding arts against other people for 10 and 15 years because of something that they did to them? And then that person, the other person that they're mad with, has gone to God and gotten it together. They have repented, they have confessed it, and they've gone on with their life. And then you have this person that is holding this resentment against that person 10 and 15 years later, they're talking about stuff like, look at him. Look at him. That person did this to me. And then you ask them, well, when did that happen? Oh, it was 15 years ago. Well, that event, that action, what that person has done against you, even though they have gotten the situation right with God, it has held you in bondage for 15 years. And that person has gone on with their life they moved on and God has set them free from the repercussions that would have happened or that could have happened. They are free. They've gotten it right. And it has held us in bondage. So we have to be careful that we don't let the thing. I know it was bad. I know. I know it was bad. I know there were things in our past that, that in the natural, in the, to the carnal mind, you know, it's, it's, it's just something I can't. I can't forgive that person. I can't say that it's okay. I can't get over this. I can't forgive it and let it go. But according to God's word, you have no choice. If you want the promises of God to be in full effect in your life, you've got to let it go. You've got to let it go. Lift your hands. I just want to pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. Father, right now, I speak healing to every hurt right now in the name of Jesus. I seek healing right now to every emotional scar, every wound, every time anybody has hurt us or let us down. I seek healing right now and I declare that it will torment us no more. I speak that by Jesus' strike, there's healing going on right now in every mind, every set of emotions, everyone's will. I speak healing right now and deliverance and I break every assignment of the enemy to hold us in bondage because of something that somebody did to us or against us. I speak right now that you're set free from that situation, from that event, and that the hurt is healed right now in the name of Jesus. I speak totally deliverance, and I speak that we have overcome now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In St. John 18 and 36, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, this kingdom is not of this world. Now, he also said, a moment ago we talked about, he said that just like he overcame the world, you're going to overcome the world. He's saying that his kingdom is not of this world. Now, now we are all, as believers, inhabitants of the kingdom of God. Jesus talked about two kingdoms, actually. He talked about the kingdom of God, and he talked about the kingdom of heaven. Now, the kingdom of God encompasses everything that God created. So in essence, the kingdom of heaven is a part of the kingdom of God. Does that make sense to everybody? So the kingdom of God is, is, is everything that God created, everything that is a part, part of that. But you are his kingdom. We are his kingdom. We are dwellers and inhabitants of his kingdom because we have confessed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Now, there are a few things that we gotta we got to understand about his kingdom. First, it is an invisible kingdom. You can't see it. His kingdom is not the church. The church is a part of his kingdom. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay? So, so the church building itself, well, listen, when you go somewhere, God's kingdom is, is where you are. But when we come here, we come to celebrate him. 
But even outside of here, you are a part of his kingdom. It is a spiritual kingdom. God's kingdom is spiritual. You can't look at it with, with, with your natu natural reasoning and expect to understand it. If you tell somebody that, you know, when you tell people, well, so-and-so did this to me, and I forgive them. I, I've committed, because I'm a Christian, to turn the other cheek. And, and I'm going to love that person now. That's a big act. That's something big in it, to love them. But that's what the Bible says, that we got to love them. Everybody is not going to understand that. Everybody's not going to understand. You know, you know what I used to do when, when I first got saved? I, I really don't like people to, to dislike me or to, to hate me or to, to try to make me their enemy. And I say try to make me their enemy uh, because I don't give anybody that kind of authority in my life for me to make them my, my enemy. Nobody has that kind of authority. Because, see, I'm putting forth extra effort towards that person. I've got to do what the Bible says. I've got to love them. Right. Now, here's the thing. People will decide that they're going to make you their enemy. Why? Could be your hair. Could be your clothes. Could be your car. It could be anything. But what I was saying was when, I, when God showed me or when I figured out that somebody considered me to be an enemy to them, and, and, and this, you know... <laughs> This, this is something I did when I first got saved. So what I would do was this. After church or wherever it was, wherever it was, I would go up to the person and I would hug the person. And it wouldn't just be a regular hug. It would be a hug where I would not let the person go. And then every time I saw that person, I would run up to that person and I would hug them and not let them go. And then at first, you would just see the person would be like they boiling over. They will be like, they just so mad. Don't, don't this person know that I don't like them? Don't this person know that I want them to be my enemy? And then after a while, when I kept doing it, after a while, they would do it. Now, most of the time, their arms would be like this, down to their side. And then after a while, I would feel them just gently patting me on my back. And then after a while, even a little further than that, I would feel them just lo loving me and hugging me. After a while, I would hear them repeating what I was saying to them. I love you. I would hear them say, I love you. I would hear them say, see, but if I chose to make that person my enemy, if I chose to treat them the way that they were treating me, it would not be resolved. Listen, let me tell you, some, some of the best friends I have now, where things we started off not so good, but I was just determined that I would not let them be my enemy and stop dealing with them because they had a misunderstanding about something that had happened or something about me that they did not like. Does that make sense to everyone? I want you all to get the principle behind this. Just because somebody wants to be your enemy or wants to make you their enemy, you do not have to participate in that. The power of the love of Jesus Christ is bigger than any person that is trying to be your enemy. It is bigger. See, you don't fight carnal weapons with carnal action. You fight carnal, you fight carnal battles with spiritual weapons, and you will win every time. That's how you're going to have success. That's how you're going to overcome. So how do how do I overcome that this person just hurt me to the core? How do I overcome? That this person literally wrecked my life. By God and with God, all things are possible. You got to understand who the source of your overcoming is. Sometimes the people we confide in will make the situation worse. If I was you, I wouldn't speak to them. If I was you, I would never forgive them. They would have you to just walk around bitter. They would have you to walk around letting that bitterness and that hurt just eat away at you. But the devil is alive. By God's grace, we're overcoming right now. Amen. We're overcoming. I don't care what they did. We're overcoming it right now. Amen. I don't care how they let us down. I don't care how that person that was supposed to be a person that you trusted and you were supposed to be able to let your guards down around. I don't care what they did. I don't know what happened 
when you were a teenager. I don't know what happened when you were a child, but right now we're going to overcome it. I know that much. I know that by God's grace and by his mercy, we're overcoming everything that has held us in captivity and in bondage all these years. We're overcoming it right now. We're overcoming it right now. Our lives are never going to be the same because those things that held us in bondage by God's grace, they're going to be destroyed right now. This is your time. This is your season. This is your time to overcome by God's grace is happening right now. Now, there are a couple other things about the kingdom of God. God's kingdom, we say that it's invisible. We say it's spiritual. It is organized. It is structured. God's kingdom is structured. You can't treat a situation one way this week and then next week go treat it another way. You have to treat it the way that he says to treat it. If he says turn the other cheek, you can't turn the other cheek this Sunday and then next Sunday knock the person out. You've got, to, you've got to be consistent because the kingdom of God is an organized, methodic kingdom that is line upon line and it is precept upon precept. Precept, upon precept. That's right. It is line upon line and precept upon precept. There's no room for variance. There's no, we can't stray. We can't one week say I feel this way and the next week feel another way. Another thing to point about the kingdom, it is under govern, the government of God through his word. God's kingdom is under the room. We talked about a minute ago that, that no government, no peace, no government, no obedience, no peace. If you don't fall under the government of God, and if you're not in obedience to the word of God, you're not going to have any peace. Peace is the end result of government and obedience. I keep saying that because I want it to sink in. I want it to sink in. The Bible says that, that, that in Isaiah 9 and 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. You're talking about a peace the Bible talks about will surpass understanding. You're talking about a peace that will have no end. That's what you're talking about. Falling under his government and under his word, it puts you in a position to have something that many of us have never had in our lives. While I was running around living any kind of way, I never had any peace. I was always back and forth. I was always looking over my shoulder. There was, there, things were not working right. But when I learned to come under his government and I started being obedient to his word, the peace of God that passes all understanding started to rule, rest, and abide with me. Listen, that's what we got to do. We got to learn. We got we to submit today. We're going to submit today. That's what we're going to do. We're going to submit to his government and we're going to submit in a new way to being obedient to him. And I promise you, this, this is going to happen. This is not something that I'm just saying. You are going to experience peace in your life like you've never experienced it before. The kingdom of God is non-corruptible. The kingdom of God is non-corruptible. What does that mean? That means that even though the enemy may try, he can't pollute it or corrupt it. Listen, when we are lined up with God's word, line up on line and precept upon precept, and we're literally walking in the spirit, the Bible says that you will not fulfill the lust of your sinful nature. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh or of your sinful nature. So when you, when you understand that his kingdom is incorruptible, and you start fall under the govern the incorruptible uh, government of His kingdom. Your life and your existence will become incorruptible. You've got to learn to dot your eyes and cross your T's according to what the Word of God says. It doesn't matter what man says. If, if what I'm saying to you doesn't line up with what he's saying, y'all have my permission not to listen to what I'm saying. Y'all have my permission to listen to it because it's got to be line up online and precept upon precept. Yeah, we can't take we can't take some of it this week and, and then revert and go back and take something somebody else said next week. No, we, only what God says will stand. The only thing that's going to stand is the Word of God, and we have to understand that a lot of times the problem is not whether God is governing over His Word. A lot of times the problem is whether we are obedient to his government over his word. 
Amen. That's what we have to understand. Because see, in him, there's no failing. He's not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should ever have to repent for lying. The failures are within us. The, there's no failing in him. The failing is within us. See, when I, when I was out there living any kind of way, my problem was never having faith that God was able or that God could do it. The problem was that I didn't believe that I could do it. I felt like I was going to mess it up in the end. But he has taught me that his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient for everything that you're going through and everything that you're experiencing. His grace is enough. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. Oh, God. The last one is that it is an everlasting and it is an eternal kingdom. That's the last principle we're going to touch on today about his kingdom. Let me, let me say this. Isaiah, <laughs> Isaiah 57. It says that it calls him the high and lofty one. And it says that he inhabits eternity. Now, eternity is outside of time and space. And we're going to add something else to that. Eternity is outside of time, space, and matter. Okay? So, where God resides, see, he created time, space, and matter for man. He doesn't need it. Where he resides is in eternity, which encompasses past present and future at all times. See, I'm going to tell you what he's going to do. I'm going to tell you how you're going to overcome today. God can literally, where he resides, he's not restricted by time, space, and matter. He can literally, when you confess something and ask him to take something away, he can literally go into your past, take that thing out of your past, and make it seem like it never happened. See, that's why the Bible says that whom the sun sets free is free indeed because it does not exist anymore. You have literally been set free from what you were dealing with, that hurt, that pain, whatever it is, those circumstances, those events, God has literally set you free from it. And when he sets you free, it's over. It ain't a devil in hell that can come and bring it back into your life. You're free and you're healed and you're delivered by his power and by his grace. Come on, lift your hands. I speak, I speak freedom and delivery right now from everything that the enemy has used to hold our minds and our hearts in bondage with. I declare that we are set free by his stripes and by his power. I cover each and every person under the sound of my voice with the blood of Jesus. And I declare that it's gone right now in the name of Jesus. I command every believer to be loose right now in the name of Jesus. And I bind the devil right now in Jesus' name. And I command every emotional hurt and every emotional scar to be gone right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, just receive. He's healing you right now. He's taking it away right now. He's taking away the hurt. He's taking away the pain. He's taking away every time somebody has let you down and hurt you in your past. God is healing you right now. He's taking it away. Uh, just receive it. Those of you at home, come on, just receive it. Watching our broadcast, just receive it. Come on, that's it. Don't get weary. Just receive it. Just love it. Just let it go. Let it go. Come on, just love it. Just love it. Power of God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, son. We thank you, son. You're being made over again. You're being set free. You're becoming that new creature that Paul talked about in Christ. That's it. Just receive. Just receive it. Come on, just worship it. Just love him. Just let it go. Come on, just let it go. Just let it go right now. He's taking it away. He's taking away every hurt. He's taking away every pain. And he's replacing it with the fruit of the spirit. Peace and joy. I speak it right now. There's a relief right now in the name of Jesus. There's a supernatural release.
Listen, there were two things. There were two things that Jesus has to do. There were two things that Jesus promised and that he said to Peter. He said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. I've given them to you. He said, whatever you bind on the earth, I'll bind it from my throne in heaven. And he said, whatever you loose on the earth, I will loose it from my throne in heaven. Let me tell you what that means. Can I tell you? If binding, what you do is you bind the devil and you loose the believer. You bind the devil and you loose the believer. And what Jesus said, if you can just muster up enough strength and enough nerve to do it and enough faith to do it, then from his throne in heaven, he will be your reinforcement. He will take it away. He will wipe it out like the devil was. We just have to bind him on the earth and, and command the believers to lose. That's what we just did. Who the sun sets free is free to be. You're set free. You're free. You're overcome. The overcoming process is beginning. It's beginning. It's beginning. It's beginning. First Corinthians 15 and 50 says, Flesh and blood cannot inherit the, inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot inherit a spiritual kingdom in the natural. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God because it is a spiritual kingdom. So you've got to overcome it. You've got to learn to walk in the spirit. And Paul said you won't fulfill the lust of your sinful nature. You've got to learn that you are called to come out from among them and she suffered, saith the Lord. And then he said, then I'll receive you. Then I'll receive you because you are walking in the spirit. See, the spirit of God only deals with things that are like it. That's why in, in Genesis 1 and 27, it says the first thing God did in the creation of man was that he created man in his likeness. He created man in his likeness, which is spirit. And then it goes on to say that in, 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 in chapter 2, verse number 5 or 6, I believe it is, verse number 7, it says, and then God formed man from the dust of the ground, body, and he breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life, and man became a living soul, spirit, body, soul. The reason he created the spirit man first was because that the spirit man was the part that was going to be made in his likeness and image. It is the part that is in communion with God. You see, God communes his Holy Spirit communes and takes up residence with our spirit. And the spirit of man is made because it's made in the likeness and image of God. It is inherently good. Your spirit cannot do wrong. Listen, I, I'm still researching this, but I'm going to tell you this. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that the spirit of man goes to hell. The Bible says that the soul goes to hell. The soul must be saved. Now, don't think that that's the end of it. I'm still seeking God for more revelation about that. But your spirit is created in his likeness and image. What we have to do what is, is listen to what Paul said. Paul said that bodily exercise of daily living. What was he saying? He was saying that you need to spend your time exercising your spirit man. Spend your time edifying your spirit man. Spend your time be becoming more and more like the person whose likeness and image it is created in. We've got to learn to walk in the spirit. This is very important, beloved. That's why we start off our messages with this. Because if we can get this victory, if we can get the victory where we understand the difference between body, soul, and spirit, if we can understand that the biggest part of the victory has already happened. You are a spirit being. You're not going to be able to knock somebody out and get the victory. you got to do what the Word says. The Word says to love them. The Word says to, to confess your faults. The Word says to turn the other cheek. I know this is not the easiest thing to do. I know that some people have done some very bad things to us. But by God's grace, we're overcoming. By God's grace, we're overcoming right now. No longer is this going to hold us in bondage. No longer what they did to us and betrayed the trust that we put in them, no longer is it going to hold our minds and our emotions in captivity. 
we're free in Jesus' name. Believers must know and understand God's kingdom is not corruptible or defeatable by human elements or devices and that even the victories over our adversaries are blood bought and paid for by Jesus on the cross. Your victory has already been paid for. See, people, people that don't really understand, they say salvation is free. Salvation is not free. Jesus paid the ultimate cost for your salvation. For us to not walk in what he died for us to have is literally a mockery of the cross. Let that sink in for a minute. He paid the ultimate price. Here's what he said. He put it this way. He said, no greater love have you seen that a man should lay down his life for another man. In other words, I'm going to pay the ultimate price for y'all. I'm going to, don't worry about it. I'm going to give it so you don't have to give it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this sacrifice so that you can have abundant life and you can have it every day and you don't have to. All you got to do is be obedient to what I told you to be obedient to. All you got to do is live a right life. It's getting easier, isn't it? Just hearing this, it's getting easier, isn't it? It's, it's, when you understand that he already paid the price and he, uh, the cost is already paid, all we have to do is every day purpose in our hearts and in our minds that today I'm going to overcome. Today, no matter what the enemy throws my way, I'm going to overcome it. I'm not going to just live any kind of way because he who that, he who died to set me free, paid the whole price. And so I am going to walk in this overcoming power that he has left me with. Oh, hallelujah. Ephesians 6 and 12, Paul says that the believer's battles are not against flesh and blood, but against our enemies and our spiritual foes. Therefore, we must use spiritual means to overcome them. Once again, I'm saying that. So now we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna just go into uh, just a few minutes where I want to talk about the first principle in overcoming. I have to kind of lay the groundwork. We're, we're pretty much finished for today. But 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, We as believers walk and we live by faith and not by sight. The first, the first principle of being an overcomer in this series, The Art of Overcoming, the first principle is faith. The first principle you got to understand is faith. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please Him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. The Bible also says, when the Son of Man cometh, may he find faith. Here's what that scripture means. That scripture means that when God comes to work your miracle in your situation, faith has already got to be present. Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. So he's got to, when he comes, he's got to find faith already existing there. See, we can pray, we can fast, we can cry out before him, but if he comes, see, he, he, he feels and he, he loves our tears. He, he counts our tears and he, he saves our tears. Yeah. But what moves God is your faith. That's, That's what moves him your, is your faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is. Believe what about him? That he is what? That he's supreme. That he's almighty. Right. That he's able to, to make you an overcomer. You must believe that he is able to do what you're asking and believing him to do. I want to read that again. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is. <laughs> and then you got to believe that he's going to reward your, your diligence and your faith with your miracle. He's going to reward your diligence and your believing with your miracle. Your miracle is going to happen. It is going to happen. He's not a man that he should lie noise. He's the son of man that he should ever have to repent. If he said it, the answer is yes and amen. It is done. It is so. He is going to do it. Jesus overcame by his faith that the Father would not forsake him and that his power was above every plot against him. You must rest assured and have faith in the same thing. Just like Jesus, you know, when he was in the garden, he said, Lord, Father in heaven, sitting on the throne, he said, if you will, please let this cup pass me by. And then the next part, 
we all love. He said, nevertheless. He said, nevertheless. Not my will, but thy will. You, God is going to fire up a nevertheless in your spirit. God. He, it's going to be a nevertheless in your heart and in your mind. Nevertheless, I don't care what that person did. I don't care what the circumstances look like. I don't care what happened to me or what those people are saying about me. Nevertheless. 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 Your will, Father, because you know what's best for me. You know what I need. You know what I got to have. You know what, I, what, what is detrimental to my existence and to my life. Oh, God. Romans 14 and 23 says, anything done outside of faith is sin. If you're not doing it, if you're not trying to overcome in faith, you are in sin. So we've got to, we've got to walk in faith. Even when the things don't look like, or oh, it might look so big and the odds might be so far against us, the hurt may have been in my life so long, I still got to have in my mind and in my knower, I got to understand that God is able to do this thing and he does not want me to live like this anymore. He is going to change it. You've got to know in your knower that God will never leave you or forsake you. You got to know that he ain't going to be, no, I don't care how it looks right now. He's somewhere nearby. He's not left me. He's not going to forsake me. You got to know that through God, you are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You, your faith's got to tell you these things. This is the starting place of your overcoming. You are more than a conqueror. You got to know that through God, all things are possible. Through him, I don't care how big that thing looks. I don't care how long you felt this way. I don't care how long this thing has been hurting me. You are more than a conqueror. He'll never leave you or forsake you. And all things through him are possible. And no good thing will he withhold from you because you love him. No good thing will he withhold. Does he want me to be healed? Yes, he does. Does he want me to be delivered? Yes, he does. Does he want me to ride the high places? Yes, he does. Does he want me to be the head and not the tail? Yes, he does. He wouldn't have said it if he had not wanted it and if he had not intended for it to happen. Hebrews 11 and 1 says that your faith right now, <laughs> your faith right now, your faith right now, is going to prove to be the substance of all the things that you hope. Your faith right now is right now proving to be the substance of all the things that you hope for. No more torment. No more lack of peace. Joy. Love. Righteousness in the Holy Ghost. It's all coming your way now. It's all coming your way now. The substance now your faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. It is the evidence of things not seen. Your faith is going to prove to be the evidence of the things that you hoped for and the things that you've not seen happen. Yeah, but I, I've dealt with this so long. I've been hurt so long. I've been emotionally scarred so long. But now your faith is going to prove to you through God's power by Jesus Christ to be the substance of the things that you hope for. It's going to prove to be the evidence of the things that you've not seen to happen. Just lift your hands in the name of Jesus. I speak right now healing. I speak deliverance. I speak overcoming. I speak that right now faith is standing up. I speak right now that every scar that has damaged our faith is gone right now in the name of Jesus. I speak that every bruise, every letdown, every setback that has hurt our hearts and made us to, to not be able to show the God kind of faith, I command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just say something for us. I declare that God's people are being set free and that they're experiencing and they're getting right now in two lives. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I declare, and I bind every spirit that is not of God, that has held God's people in bondage. And I command God's people to be loose now 
in the name of Jesus. I declare that by the stripes of the Most High, our Savior, Jesus Christ, every believer under the sound of my voice in the sanctuary and listening to our broadcast right now is set free. I command every ungodly spirit to go now in the name of Jesus. I command every hurt and every pain to go now in the name of Jesus. And I declare that every believer's mind is set free. In Jesus' great name. In Jesus' great name. In Jesus' great name. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, just, just receive the blessing right now. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Father. We thank you for being bigger than any circumstance and any situation. We thank you for being bigger than any test or any trial. We thank you for being bigger than any emotional problem that we may have. And we receive the miracle now. We receive our miracle now. In the name of Jesus. And we just let go right now in the name of Jesus. To everything that we held on to that has called us, caused us anguish and pain and discomfort. We let it go right now. In the name of Jesus, our soon to return King. He who was and he who is and he who is to come. Jesus the Christ, the most high. In Jesus' name. Amen.